Ho ho ho, my gaming friends. I hope you had a good Christmas this year, and you got that important gift you've been asking for. But now it's time to recap on the games I've been playing in December. Now remember, these are my opinions, and sometimes there might be some spoilers along the way. So here are the games that I've been playing, and their designated times in this video. Welcome back to the HUD everyone, I'm Zaccaroni, and today I'll be going through some of the games I've been playing in December. So without further ado, please be seated, and here comes your second helpings. I have a friend named Storgero, who is interested in realistic shooters that requires precision and accuracy with his weapons. But the one he told me to start off with is Insurgency, a multiplayer shooter that mixes tactical and arcadey gunplay. So I decided to invite him over to show me the ropes because I wanted to do a little experiment with my leftover show. And right off the bat, he did warn me that this game is a love and hated game. The first bit we did, but didn't shown in the leftovers, is the tutorial, where I go through the instructions from the sergeant who has no patient with me, and the gunplay does feel arcadey. It's not quite as snappy as Call of Duty's, but that's the whole point really. The next thing we did is going into a game against the AI in co-op, but the difference is that we don't respawn if someone captures the control point and then other players in Rush, where one team captures control points while the other team defends them. But the thing is that if the defenders lost all the control points, they can still win by defending a payload without losing all their teammates, adding one last chance to bring the match back to them. But after a few laughs due to a lot of mistakes I made, sorry about that random player, I was not enjoying this game really. Sure, its gunplay is tight, it requires a lot of strategy, and every equipment is unlocked without level grinding, but it's just like Storgero said, it's a love or hated kind of game, and I'll just stick with Splatoon and Doom, if you don't mind. Might be here for a while. Your humming never gonna give you up. Bloody hell. <laughs> okay, how about this? Oh, there we go. Boy oh boy, Sakura can't seem to take a break. One moment he's got a ticket on a plane to a tropical island, only for Nintendo to message him to make a new game for their new- Huh? What's that? Nintendo had got rid of their YouTube policy program. Well then, um... Attention performers, you have all been promoted to kitchen duty under further notice. Okay, take two. Boy oh boy, Sakura can't seem to take a break. One moment he's got a ticket on a plane to a tropical island, only for Nintendo to message him to make a new game for their new console. Then Sakura just said, you know what? I'm going to make the ultimate Smash Brothers game that I'm hoping Nintendo will finally be done with me. And thus we have Super Smash Brothers Ultimate on the Switch, who has the biggest roster of characters in a fighting game since Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I was excited when I heard this, every character returning from old games as well as some new ones. This is the greatest moment in gaming history, however, when I started the game, there are just 8 characters to pick from, and you have to keep playing to unlock more characters to play with. While it makes sense to spend time with the modes, to which I'll get to later, I really wish that the new characters like Ridley, King K. Rule, and the Inklings were unlocked straight away, given that they are newcomers to the series. Also, the game has 103 stages to choose from, but... There are only four new stages based on Zelda Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, Splatoon, and Castlevania, while the rest of the stages are from past games. But while that is disappointing to some, there are some stages that I can finally try for the first time. After all, my first game in the series was Brawl really, and I wanted to try out Fountains of Dreams ever since I heard its spectacular music. But what about the gameplay? Well, the same rules apply from previous games, just stay on the screen at all costs while knocking your opponent off the screen, 
but there are some new mechanics to the game like air dodging to avoid up attacks, shield countering that requires skill to pull off, and your recovery time is slower if you dodge too much, adding a more competitive feel to the game. So yeah, it's still fun to this day. As for single player content, well it's pretty limited, beside the fact that this game is called Ultimate, but I'm guessing they mean the characters, stages and options really. You got Mob Smash, Training and Classic Mode, but the big highlight of the game is the adventure mode titled World of Light, where you are presented with a series of fights in a world map with treasures and characters to unlock in the main game. These types of battles range from characters changing to metal for a few seconds, or the entire stage is covered in lava, and each fight presents itself in a rock paper scissors style format of attacks, grabs, and shields, and this forced me to make a team of spirits that can give me a chance to get through. Now I'm aware that they replaced the trophy figurines that you collect in previous games, but they now have a purpose for collecting them. Plus, I'm not a big pop figurine collector, so I know I won't be 1000% complete in this game. However, I actually prefer Super Smash Bros. Brawl's Subspace Emissary because while the fights are creative and it requires the right set of spirits to successfully win, it was starting to drag a bit with its battles because it takes so long to get to the main objective, given that the map is so big. Luckily though, the boss fights were worth getting to and the final finale was worth it to the end. But I don't think I'll play this mode again because of all the things I said from above, if you catch my drift. Also, I love what they did with classic mode, where each character has their own structure, like Luigi, who faced against the scariest Nintendo characters, ending with a boss fight with Dracula. Yeah, that's right, Luigi's gone from ghost hunting to vampire slaying. Perhaps they should add it to Luigi's Mansion 3. As for online play, well, it's pretty much hit and miss, really. One moment, I enter a match that was smooth and plain sailing, and another match that started to get laggy, slowing the game down to a crawl. Now, I haven't played all the modes in local multiplayer yet, and while single player content is small and online play is 50-50, I know I'll be playing this game a lot with my friends when I'm out and about. Also, I prefer the GameCube controller, and my favorite characters in it so far are Inkling, King K. Rule, and Cloud. Wish I need to play Final Fantasy VII later. Well, that's all the games I've been playing in December. I hope you appreciate my opinions, but now I'm going to talk about some of the new changes I'm making to my channel. And if you are a first timer, here's what you need to know. First off, the toppings on where I talk about some of the features a game has to offer to help you decide that if this game is for you will be the same. But now that Nintendo has got rid of their creative program on YouTube, I can finally do toppings videos on their new games as well as leftovers on their older titles in the future. If you don't know what are leftovers, it's a series that I play all games for the first time and post my first reaction to them on this channel in five parts. Second, after the end of the month, I usually talk about games that I played in a specific month, but now I'm only going to talk about the games that I played when I'm ready because I usually rush myself completing a game near the end of the month and sometimes that leads to a review that I find disjointed Finally, there are a lot of games that need dozens of hours of seeing through and it is impossible to complete in a single month. These range from hours of content single player games, MMORPGs, MOBAs, battle royales and competitive online community games. So I'm going to make a new show titled A Year Supply Of where I'll be playing a game for a full year then post my reaction to you in each episode here and then I'll share my experience of the game at the end of the year. The first game I'll be playing for a year is Fortnite, the most famous and sometimes infamous game that is still played to this day, so stay tuned later for the first episode in 2019. Well, that's all the changes I have made to my channel. I hope you appreciate these improvements, and if you like what you see, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. But until then, I'm Zaccaroni. Enjoy your pizza, have a happy new year, and I'll see you next time.